Let's bring in right now best-selling author and columnist for Vanity Fair and uh, a guy that uh, my mom absolutely adores, especially, well, back when he was writing about uh, Bill Clinton, mm -hmm. Christopher Hitchens. Christopher, thank you so much for being with us. You have an article today in Slate. I, w I want to talk about Sarah Palin, the debate process, yes. Iraq. But let's begin with Afghanistan because that's your article today. How are things going in Afghanistan? Well, very badly. And um, it, sh it shows that it's not a matter of how many troops you have. Um, it's that these things are not quantitative, as people keep thinking. Our strategy is wrong in Afghanistan. What Just then? as the strategy had to change in Iraq for it to work, it wasn't a matter of the troop level so much. Um, I think the single most critical thing is the following. Iraq has an economy and will one day, probably fairly soon, be extremely rich. It has real oil and right. real economy. Afghanistan doesn't have an infrastructure of any kind. It used to make mainly grapes for raisins. It was a, it was a vineyard country, mm -hmm. orchard country. All, all that's been chopped down now. And we know what they grow. Right. In fact, they grow 97% of the world's uh, opium. Right. Um, we burn their only crop when we could be buying it. I mean, we, uh, because of this fetish of the war on drugs, the American, the American ambassador in Kabul even wants to spray their crops from the air. And that, there are Afghans who remember helicopter gunships from the, the Russian time. We should be buying that crop. You know, we pay the Turks to grow opium so we can make painkillers. Why don't we give the Afghans that, that business? You know, um, Until they can regrow their orchards and their vineyards, which will take some time. Right. We, we're, de we're determined to make sure that all the profits of this, of this economy go straight to the pockets of the my, Taliban. My uh, co-host, Mika Brzezinski, uh, she will be kind enough to get her father on the show so we can talk to him. And yeah. he keeps warning about a surge mentality in Afghanistan, says it would be a terrible mistake. Uh, it sounds like you agree with that, that we can't just blindly say, oh, let's send more troops to Afghanistan, because he fears, and he knows he was there when it happened, he fears it could cause uh, 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 Afghans to actually uh, strike back at Americans. There's a very interesting leaked uh, cable from the British ambassador in mm -hmm. Kabul, so Sherrod Cooper Cole, so I used to know uh, a bit. A uh, very intelligent man, very outspoken. It looks to me as if he did say the things that are said in the cable. Um, he says, look, if you, if you just bring in more troops, you increase the impression that you're an occupying power and you give the other side more targets. He said we're hit. doomed to fail. He said the yeah, American strategy is absolutely... So, so could it be possible that in the long run we succeed in Iraq and fail in Afghanistan? I think it's, it's, it's always been the obverse of what most people say, that there's a good war in Afghanistan and there's this bad war of choice in Iraq. Iraq was much the most important country to salvage, both from Ba'athism and from Al-Qaeda. And it can get back on its own feet. And Paul Wolfowitz was actually right to say that it can pay its own way but, but, in but, the but, long but, run. But even, even Afghanistan if, can't do any of those even things. If, even if you disagree with Wolfowitz and the neocons and you think this war is made, regardless... 20 years from now, it sounds like you're saying it is more likely we will see a flourishing or at least a stable Iraq and a chaotic Afghanistan. Yeah, it's, just, it's quite, quite, quite because Because quite of oil mainly? Yes. Yeah. Wow. And, because of, and because of the... <coughs> excuse me, but I'm a bit husky this morning. Um, and because of the insanity of the war on drugs. I mean, think, think of all the countries where that's worked so far. Well, They're determined to say, well, maybe in Afghanistan... Why aren't, why aren't we doing what we do with Turkey, and why aren't we buying these crops for painkillers? Search me. Well, because it's a dogma that we can't have anything to do with opium or drugs, and uh, we insist that the whole product of this extraordinary underground economy, all of the revenues go straight to the Taliban, to Al-Qaeda, and to the warlords. We won't touch that money. So the, all the real product of Afghanistan is handed by us to the enemy. It's as if we want to so lose. So what do we do? Well, what try, is the next to, try to get do? out of this suicidal mentality. It's time that both Obama and McCain were asked questions about this. It's been discussed at a very high level in Afghanistan. Everyone knows the option of doing this <laughs> exists, but no candidate wants to touch the war are, on drugs. Are you, are you, as someone that grew up uh, watching the prime minister take questions from parliament every yes. week, are you not flabbergasted by the inane formats that we Americans... Uh, hoist upon our presidential candidates? It's incredible. I mean, they call it a debate when the two candidates are not allowed to engage with each other directly. Even, actually, though Jim Lehrer did try it at one point when things were flagging. But it's they, wouldn't, they it's wouldn't even joint, talk to each it's other. A joint, no, they wouldn't do it, because they're so frozen into this posture of a joint press conference. It's pathetic. You know, by the way, McCain has said that if he's elected as a president, actually it's the best thing in his program, he will submit himself to questions on the Hill.
Really? They'll have a question time. Do you think yeah. Sarah Palin will do the same? No. <laughs> <laughs> How did uh, Meek and I have been no, talking? I don't think so. <laughs> Meek and I have been talking about Sarah Palin's performance. Uh, give us your take on Sarah Palin and and what it says about John McCain that he selected Sarah Palin well, as one of the VP one of the women nominee. one of the women who did best at this. Uh, exposure to question time and debate was Margaret Thatcher. And I simply cannot imagine Mrs. Thatcher ever sort of rolling her hip or winking or doing any of this flirtatious carry-on stuff. And I don't like the politician who forces me to ask, what do you take me for? Yeah. I, the, as soon as I'm asking that question, I'm asking the wrong question. I shouldn't be in that position. I ask it of McCain, too. Are you really telling me that's the best person you could find out of all the people in the United States, all the women in the United States? Because if so, it's a terrible judgment on you. And it seems to have had a, a, a suitably um, chastening effect on his chances. Pat Buchanan? Uh, well, I want to ask him about Afghanistan. Okay, let's Basically, go back to Afghanistan. Uh, I want to ask about Pakistan. There's no doubt we're being effective in killing some of the leaders in uh, Pakistan, the Afghan, I mean, the Taliban and also al-Qaeda. Is it worth the price if we destabilize a country of 170 million Muslims, deeply anti-American, with nuclear weapons? Well, I don't think we're destabilizing it. I think there is a, actually a Pakistan-Afghan war going on now. The Taliban rule in Afghanistan was another name for Pakistani imperialism, really. The Pakistanis have always wanted to run Afghanistan as their colony or their dependency because it gives them strategic depth. Right. And the, the thing that really matters to them, India. fighting against our great democratic pluralist, English-speaking ally, India, in which we have a huge state, which also has nuclear weapons, many more than Pakistan, is a, is a local superpower. The best uh, foreign policy change the Bush administration made, in my opinion, was away from the, our historical uh, underpinning of Pakistan and to, to a much broader alliance with India, including a nuclear one. I think that's a huge improvement. Well, yeah, that, 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 I, I've heard other people and, and read other articles about, and it's flown under our radar. We read the papers every day. We talk about what's going on. But we turn around, and apparently the Bush administration has created a, a stronger uh, uh, relationship with India, that that may be one of his lasting legacies Military, moving forward. But also economic and political and diplomatic. Well, one of the problems in India was an ally of the Soviet Union in the Cold War. During the previous Afghan war, they were on the side of the Soviets. It's true that the Indians um, were a bit worse than neutralists in the Cold War, but that's all changed now. <clears throat> and remember, um, the Indians were fighting against al-Qaeda long before we were, yeah. and were helping the Northern Alliance against the Taliban long before we were. And it's a predominantly Hindu country, and Hinduism was the first religion on which bin Laden declared war. Talk, talk about so we, we have a huge potential third world ally against uh, this madness. And I think, I think it's, a, it's an opportunity but that Iran should have been seized earlier. Iran is also an enemy of al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda wants us to bomb Iran. Al-Qaeda don't, don't think has a position on whether we bomb Iran no, or not. No, they Al-Qaeda in Iraq they has said, happy blow them back after, to the Stone Age. After, well, let's put it this way. Actually, after there, there are a lot of, after all kinds of conflicts within no, no. conflicts. After 9-11, yeah, the right, Iranians helped us. Th sorry. After 9-11, the Iranian intelligence agency yes. helped us uh, in, in Afghanistan. Well, if you remember, if, sure. Bill, if Bill Clinton hadn't stopped them, the Iranians were going to invade Afghanistan on their own to overthrow the Taliban after their envoys um, were murdered, were murdered in, in Mazar Sharif. Um, they were bringing their armor right up to the border. They hate the Taliban. And they've actually, on that border, been quite cooperative ever since. But look, Al-Qaeda wouldn't be the only Sunni Arabs who would secretly want the United States to take out the Iranian nuclear facilities. Very quickly, you... They're you very, I mean, they're terrified, especially the Gulf states of nuclear blackmail once the, once the Shia theocracy has a, has a nuke. Yeah. You, you have a flag pin on your lapel? You That's don't the see that flag theory. of the Iraqi Kurds, of the free Kurdistan in the north of Iraq. All right. Do, do the, great, the greatest outstanding success of regime change in the region. All right. Thank you so much, Christopher Hitchens. Always a pleasure. Greatly appreciate you being here. Hope you come back more often. All right. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Very good.